And uh, I have mentioned our upcoming speaker, speaker Victor Farsik, because many times cross-plane has come up. And uh, one of the categories of talks that we have here at GitOps Days is Flux working with um, many projects such as Terraform, Prometheus, um, uh, Vault, Helm, uh, now VS Code, et cetera, et cetera. And so we're really excited that Victor has joined us today and we'll talk about Crossplane. And I definitely want to promote, um, if you haven't seen any of Victor's videos, hey, Victor, it's great to see you. Love the shirt. Hey. Uh, yeah, if anybody hasn't seen Victor's uh, videos, uh, I think you've been living under a rock because you should definitely check them out. The, you know, you've been doing years of these very informative, detailed, um, fantastic um, videos. So we thank you for all the educational material and we thank you for when you've covered uh, Flux. Uh, it was very exciting and they're very like fast paced and well edited. And so definitely um, uh, happy to promote them here. So we're oh. thankful that you're here to uh, present at this event as well. So um, yes, lots of people are talking about Flux and Crossplane. So take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's let's go for it. Let me share my screen. There we are, right? So, <coughs> sorry for that. Let's talk about applying GitOps to everything, uh, which I believe is very important because we've been very limited in, in our usage of GitOps, and that's a shame. So, you already heard, this is me. Uh, I work for Abound. I'm going to, I have a Twitter account. Everybody does. Uh, foundations, books, uh, not important. What does matter? especially since I don't have much time, is that I start my talk right away. And so let's talk about GitOps, right? What is GitOps? And uh, typically there are two components in that story. First, we have a desired state in Git. That's where we store what we want, the state of something, or more likely of a whole system to be. And then we have a process that converges uh, the actual state, what really something is, into the same state as the one designed, uh, defined as the desired state, right? So relatively straightforward. This is what I want. This is what it is. And then I have a process that converts what it is into what I want and does that continuously all the time in a loop, right? There are certain principles. You already heard about them today. Uh, it needs to be declarative. It needs to be version of the mutable, pulled automatically, continuously reconciled. You know that stuff, right? And you know that most of the GitOps tools, especially Flux, is based on Kubernetes operators. And that makes a lot of sense simply because Kubernetes itself is designed to be extensible. It has an API that can be converted into almost anything. It has drift detection, reconciliation, and that fits perfectly into Flux, right? It's not a coincidence that Flux is designed for Kubernetes. But here comes the important question. Most of us are using GitOps principles as defined, not kind of when I say GitOps principle, I don't mean you have a janky job that does something. I mean, real reconciliation, pulling, uh, pulling the desired state and all that stuff. Most of us are using GitOps for our applications. And the question is, why? Right? Uh, and the especially important part to understand is that Kubernetes resources, what we are synchronizing into Kubernetes cluster, is not really the actual state. The actual state are your containers. The actual state are your lambdas. The actual state is your, are your servers, your networking, your clusters. That's real. That's the actual state. Kubernetes resources are not. They're just describing something that helps controllers do something else and eventually get to something real. So the actual state inside Kubernetes is containers, it's external load balancers, it's storage, and so on and so forth. But that's only if we look at Kubernetes from a very narrow perspective. Kubernetes is sometimes the actual state. Sometimes what we want is inside of that Kubernetes cluster, but at other times, Kubernetes is just a bridge, just an intermediary between the desired state, which is what you're storing it, and what you really, really want. What you want 
could be Kubernetes itself, could be what's inside Kubernetes clusters, could be what's outside. So the actual state, what you really want to theoretically to manage are databases, uh, applications that are not running in Kubernetes, servers, clusters, third-party applications, services, Kubernetes itself. All those things are your actual state. And if you focus on GitOps principles, not necessarily on how majority of us implemented GitOps, there is no good reason why we wouldn't manage those, everything, the whole actual state with the GitOps tools. So the question is, again, why are we using GitOps mostly for applications? Especially since we know that if Flux is synchronizing what is in Git to what is in a Kubernetes cluster, and we know that Kubernetes cluster can be extended through CRDs to manage almost anything, then we really can easily extend GitOps to anything. All we need, really need, and when I say all, it's actually huge, is a way in Kubernetes to represent all the real resources that we're managing, you know, servers, databases, applications, this and that, everything. And that's where Crossplane comes into play, right? Crossplane allows us to install providers and providers contain custom resource definitions with corresponding controllers that allow us to define through Kubernetes interface different resources like EC2 instances, ELBs, databases, servers, clusters, almost everything. So, and by the way, Crossplane is open source, CNCF foundation project and so on and so forth. The company and people who started Crossplane, that's where I work upbound, check us out. This is not a sales pitch, so do it later. Now, with that very quick introduction, let me start with the demo immediately. I need to switch from slides, which I don't like, into my terminal. Okay, let me show, let me display how all that works. How I can use Flux to manage absolutely everything. So here's an example. I have this file that says, hey, you know what? I would like to define something called cluster claim. I will show later what cluster claim is. What matters for now is that this is a CRD in Kubernetes. We call it XRD uh, or cross-plane resource definition. You can call it CRD as well. And I'm saying, hey, I want to manage a cluster. I want that cluster through labels to be in AWS and I want it to be EKS type of cluster. I'm going to give you some very, very simple parameters. Like this is the size of the nodes. This is the minimum number of nodes. Off you go. Now, I already have, because it would take a lot of time, I already created a management cluster. I have a cluster where Crossplane is running. I installed Flux inside of the cluster and I told Flux to watch a specific repository. So all I have to do is push this file to a Git repo and then Flux will synchronize this definition with my Kubernetes cluster and it will make sure that it's always in sync and then the second half of the story will be done with Crossplane. Crossplane, once it reaches the cluster, will take it over and say, okay, so you want a cluster let me see what cluster means for you and I will take care of all, everything else, right? Now, since I'm using AWS here, it takes 25 to 30 minutes to create a cluster and everything else that I might need. So I did that in advance. I already pushed that file to Git and I will show you now the results. So I did a couple of hours ago just to save you from waiting too much. I pushed it to Git, Flux synchronized it with my management cluster, Crossplane, took it over and created. And the real question is, what did it create? And I can approach that question with a couple of ways. I can say, hey, uh, let's see what is in Flux system namespace and get cluster claims, right? This is a completely new resource and it says, okay, cool. You have your cluster up and running. It's called production. It's control plane is active, not pool is active and it's ready. It's ready for you to use. And you can see that I did it like two hours ago, give or take. Now, that would not give it a lot of, uh, it doesn't sound so great, right? I did something and synchronized it with the Kubernetes cluster and then Crossplane did something. 
So I need to show you what Crossplane really did when it when Flux synchronized this resource. Uh, I can do that with this shortcut, which is uh, get managed type of resource uh, is actually essentially a shortcut that tells Crossplane, show me all the resources that you are managing right now. And this takes uh, a few seconds to process, just enough for me to have a sip of my beverage. And while waiting for that actually to happen, let me show how I created all that. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to open a repository. Here we go. Uh, so how did I get to have that definition, that uh, cluster claim, whatever it is, because it doesn't come out of the box from anywhere. So here is what I did. Uh, and this is, this is partly to enable GitOps in my organization, partly to also enable simplify things for everybody. So I created uh, something we call package and I said, hey, I want to define a new custom resource definition. Uh, we call it composite resource definition. And I'm going to call it cluster claim, as I told you. I'm going to use open API schema to create the schema for that new service that will have some fields like version, node size, minimum number of nodes. And then I'm going to create an implementation for Civo, for DigitalOcean, for EKS, and for GKE or whatever I want. Oh, there is EKS as well. So now, since I'm using EKS today, AWS, this is my, uh, no, that's the wrong file. That's the wrong file. Here we are, right? This is the implementation that has typical things you see in infrastructure as code tools. I'm defining a cluster with a bunch of fields. I'm defining a node group and so on and so forth. I'm doing a bunch of things. Uh, but for my end users, that's irrelevant, right? They're using that cluster claim. And this is what I got as a result of pushing those 15 li lines of YAML or 20 um, to Git repository, right? And Flux synchronizing it. I got role policy attachments. I got roles. I got uh, some Kubernetes manifests were installed in that cluster because let's face it, cluster by itself is not very useful if it's not uh, operational and production ready. Some Helm charts, some node group and cluster and VPC and so on and so forth, right? So, so Crossplane expanded my custom resource definition or XRD into all the resources that are needed. And now my cluster is ready to use and I can show how that looks like uh, by um, pushing something to Git. So I'm going to create a directory DevOps, right? And then I'm going to say, hey, I would like uh, to deploy a backend application with a database to that cluster. How would I do that, right? Now, one approach I can take is I could define a deployment and uh, service and virtual service and ingress and RDS database and subnets and blah, whole madness, right? But somebody already created those services for me, those custom resources. And all I have to do is define something like this. Hey, I want something called app claim. And uh, that's how Desiris in my company defined an application and I'm going to choose that application to be a backend application with a database running in the same cluster. And I'm going to use this image uh, uh, for my application. And I want a database. So I'm going to say I want to claim my SQL. Again, completely custom resource created by people in my company. I'm going to use the, uh, I'm going to run the database. No, this is boring. Let's do something more. Sorry. I'm going to do something better than that. I'm, this is really boring. Okay, let's do something better than that. Let's go like this. Let me uh, retrieve the cube config of my new cluster. Let's do this. And I'm going to define an even better application. I'm going to say, let's go production directly instead of development. Let's be brave and let's use this definition, which is the same what I was explaining before, but instead of running local database in that cluster, I'm going to actually choose to run, uh, where is it, where, where am I? Yes, I'm going to choose to run a database in AWS 
RDS database and PostgreSQL. It could be MySQL or whatever. And I'm going to store that file and I'm going to push that file to git repo. Add commit dash m something and I'm going to push it, right? And I'm going to tell uh, Flux to use that new cluster, right? Not the cluster where Flux is running, not the cluster where Crossman is running, that new cluster to use it and synchronize the, what I just created, that YAML, simple YAML with that new cluster. And I'm going to do that by using Flux Create. You all know Flux. I'm not going to go into details of Flux. I uh, will, like, however, have to change one file. Uh, here we go. Because for some reason that I cannot explain, Flux does not allow me to specify cube config that it should use to connect to a cluster I'm interested in. So I'm going to do that myself. Say cube config should be uh, stored in a secret uh, that is referenced with the name uh, production cluster. Now you might be asking, where does this secret come from? And the answer is relatively straightforward. Crossplane, when it created a cluster, created this secret. And I can just tell, tell Flux, use the secret. Connect to that cluster. Apply that manifest. And really, do whatever needs to be done. And I'm going to double check whether everything is fine. Yes, it is. I pushed it. I'm going to create this uh, Flux customization. Here we are, right? And I'm going to monitor now what is happening in my newly created cluster, right? Uh, it might take 10 seconds or something. Okay, here we go. It's already there, right? Uh, Flux synchronized that manifest with that cluster. Here are the two, two resources that I got. Uh, application claim and SQL claim. Uh, they're false. The databases take like five minutes to create the RDS database in, um, in, uh, in AWS. So let me take a quick look at what's happening in, uh, inside of that cluster. Uh, what's happening in the namespace production? Now you will see that that manifest expanded it to a deployment, a service, an ingress, uh, and uh, deployment of course created replica set, replica set created pod, but this pod is failing. Now you can interpret this as Victor is, doesn't know what he's doing, or you can say this pod is failing because it expects, it, that's the application that expects to connect to a database and it will connect to a database through a secret, but that secret doesn't exist. It will exist only after the crossplane creates the database itself. So I need to wait until the database is created. And then once it is, the secret will be there. And then the pod of the application that connects to the database will automatically start working. And I can see what's going on by listing the managed resources again. This will take a moment or two. I'm not patient enough, probably. Let's go. Come on. Don't fail the demo at the very end. I'm not even paying attention how much time I have. I hope that I have enough. OK, here we go. So what happened is when I pushed that manifest to Git, that's a composition that converted itself into everything I needed for the database. And you can see that my RDS instance is being created right now. RDS instance needs DB subnet group and that was already created. Uh, and it needed the VPC that was created and a security group was created and route table was created and internet gateway was created and all the things required to run a database were created through that simple file. The only thing left now is to, f is to wait for the database to come up. And I hope that that will happen soon. Now, let me remind you one more time. Uh, what did I get? Uh, how, wh what are the things that I defined? Remember, all this and where was the other one? And all 
this was created through this file prod apps backend yaml right i defined a new app claim this is a new resource defined through crossplane you but which i defined through crossplane flew labels to say which implementation i want few parameters with the things that matter date claiming a database again a few labels few parameters and say and this is important part that i forgot to mention before and this is telling it hey when you create the database with everything you need create that secret and that secret will be used by this application later <coughs> so let's see whether this is now running is it running or is it not running don't fail me at the last possible moment mm. it will run uh trust me it will run it it probably takes five to ten more minutes until the database was created okay here we are almost there almost there prepare your questions there oh the database is running look at it it's ready and if i go and open the pods let's see the application the application that was uh, not running before is now running because it got the secret it find out how to connect to the database connect to the database huge success it's working and now i can say if you have any questions shoot them at my side thank you so much for watching thank you for listening check out upbound my company check out crossplane because it's absolutely awesome uh listen to the podcast come to my youtube channel and now ask me questions if you have any that was awesome. I love your presentation style. It's just so fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> you keep it entertaining. It's great. Um, <clears throat> so there is a question. How should current Terraform users adopt this without rewriting their modules? Uh, you cannot without rewriting your modules. Uh, I mean, let's, let's face it. It never worked for any application. You could not switch from Ansible to Terraform without rewriting Ansible. You could not switch from your shell scripts to Ansible without rewriting shell scripts. Right. You will need to do some rewrites. Now, you can go step by step. There is a Terraform mod provider that allows you to run Terraform HCL within Crossplane. That shouldn't be the end goal, but you can use it to transition partly, kind of like, put first everything in Kubernetes and then start rewriting part by part. Uh, the way how it is organized and uh, structured and those compositions, you will don't, not need to rewrite literally everything. You will just need to rewrite the recipes and then applying those recipes or compositions is very, very easy. But uh, so let's put it this way. If you rewrite it to crossplane, you will continue having jobs because somebody needs to do it. It's a good thing. <laughs> and you're right. I mean, HCL is a HashiCorp created language. So yeah, obviously it's going to, yeah, be yeah. a proprietary, <laughs> right? <clears throat> I don't see any other ones coming in yet. And again, like Tomo mentioned earlier, there's a delay with YouTube. So probably there will be questions <laughs> asked <laughs> shortly, but um, if you could just keep an eye out on that channel and, and answer them as they come in. Will do. Thank you so much. It was it was awesome having you present. <laughs> Thank for you. Us. Thank you. Cheers, everybody. Bye.